So when you take this questioning process of oneness, what you're basically saying is, rather than the questions, who am I or what am I, awareness, space, so on, these, these kind of questions, you're saying, where am I? Where am I located? Not who am I, what is my ultimate identity, not what am I, what am I composed of, but the more fundamental question, which is, where am I? Where am I located? In other words, you're going beyond trying to identify who you are or what you are. You're trying to locate where you are, really find yourself. And, and another question is one of, well, ascertaining if there's any place where you are not. That's kind of an interesting question. Am I not in that chair? Am I not in this other person? It's another way to look at it when you're trying to locate where you are. And what you're looking at also, unlike in the other approaches, the questioning approaches, you're not looking to your center or to your boundary. You are looking to this, this experience of of separation, if you will, but not necessarily that. You're looking more to what is this space between yourself and others. You're essentially asking yourself, what is this separation? Is it real? Is it true? You know, what is this what is the connection between self and others? Is there a connection between self and others? And what is it? And how do I find it? But also what you're doing with your awareness is you're not necessarily going inward or outward. You're going forward. You're going forward into all of the objects of your experience. Ideally, to the point where you get beneath the objects and you experience oneness. And also what you're doing, rather than getting at the beginning or the end, you know, what, where does my awareness begin? You know, where does my awareness end or in space? You're getting into the middle. You're getting into this point of saying, what is this place between myself and others. What is there? What is going on there? Is this a place of awareness, space, and oneness, or is it something else? And of course, a relevant question is, just as with the other questioning processes, what is awareness? What is space? You're asking, what is oneness? Not just what is separation, is it real, whatever, but what is oneness? What is the nature of it? What does that mean? Beyond being a concept, what does it mean as an experience? What is the experience of oneness? Another relevant question is, what is between? What is between my body and these other bodies? What is between my mind and these other minds? What is between everything that I experience through my body and my senses and my body and my senses? What is between those two? Another question is what connects? What is it rather than the questions of well, and also, rather than the questions, what is inside and what is outside, what is between? So you're, if you say, what is inside, you're trying to find your awareness. If you're saying, what is outside, you're trying to find space. If you're asking the question, what is between, you're trying to find oneness. And likewise, unlike these other questions, what knows? What is it that knows? Well, awareness. What is it that fills space? What connects? It is oneness that connects. So you're asking this question, well, what is this thing that's connecting me to others? What is it that's connecting life into one whole? Is there such a thing? Or is that just myth? Or is it a fact? 
Can it be experienced directly? Can it per be perceived directly? And and how? So this is just an outline of the questioning process. What I've what I've walked you through is the questioning process, the questioning process of awareness, of space, and of oneness. And this is just to give you a clear sense of what a spiritual teaching model based on a, a questioning process looks like. Whether you just take these questions and ask them to yourself to help you to come to realization or awakening, or if you were to apply them in helping others, either way, this, is, this gives you a good general picture of how to go about it. So now I want to talk about an experiential uh, experiential language uh, teach spiritual teaching model or the language of enlightenment. In other words, when you have people essentially utilizing a certain kind of language, a mystical kind of language or a enlightened kind of language that actually the nature of it, even even if you read people, you read people like Ramana Maharshi or whoever, and if you read them, you start to have a different an experience or the beginnings, the inkling of the experience of what they're saying, or at least you feel the truth of it, or maybe you feel their power or their energy. But either way, the point is, is that I think it is possible to take language and to not to communicate the experience of enlightenment, but to communicate in a way that helps to facilitate the process of coming to this awareness, that helps to communicate the actual, what one needs to do with their awareness to have this experience. So I'm just going to give a few examples. I did another video that was more, well, I don't know if it was more detailed. This might have details that it doesn't have, but it's just to give a sense of what an experiential language is like. And what it's aimed at. So let's talk about an experiential language through awareness. Okay, so so what you what you need to do when you're taking an experiential language through awareness, you need to look at this whole thing of how to take your awareness and guide it inward, to guide it inside, to guide it internally, and so it's hard to find words that really are applicable. But here's a few examples that might be helpful. What you have to do is you have to, you have to take your awareness and it has to sink. It has to start sinking. Sinking, falling, diving, plunging, dropping, submerging. It has to go backward. Keep going backward. Keep your awareness pushing backward, inward, driving, penetrating. Because what you're trying to see is behind your body and your mind. And so you have to keep driving your awareness backward in order to see that. You need to, all the things that you're grasping onto, you have to dive beneath them, behind them. You have to plunge, submerge. And that's just to give you a sense. I'm not going to belabor that because it's a challenge for me to... That language has been the real challenge. And maybe I can develop it further, but at, at the, as it stands, it's a, it's a little more challenging to get the right terminology for an experiential language through awareness, at least for me. Um, but you also have an experiential language through space and through oneness. So, so an experiential language through space is more like this. Softening. You take your awareness and you just soften it. You take your gaze and you soften it. You relax it. You expand your awareness. Why not? Who says you can't? Who told you you can't expand your awareness? Expand your awareness. You extend it. 
you spread it. You maintain this openness of awareness that's not just open to object objects, but an openness of awareness that's just pure openness, like the sky or like space, but it is this it is space. And you just allow your your awareness to have a floating easing kind of quality you ease into space you float into space and you place place no limits on your expansion flying floating soaring like the wind and yet everywhere like the space and that's just to give a sense of what an experiential language through space is like. An experiential language through oneness is, is this taking everything in your experience, everything, all of it, and not coming up with some mental, emotional kind of thing of, I'm going to accept everything. That's nonsense. That's not how you do it. What you're doing is you're taking your awareness and you're embracing everything to realize that your awareness already embraces everything. You're allowing everything to realize that your awareness already allows everything. You're welcoming everything to see that your awareness welcomes everything. You're receiving everything, merging with everything blending with everything and including everything, not as some kind of concept of turning a blind eye to all of the things in human life that are not right, but recognizing that awareness contains everything in oneness, in space. So, that is what it is. The practice is not this naive notion that you're going to accept something that you don't accept. It's to, with your awareness, accept everything so that you can realize the underlying awareness and oneness that already accepts everything because it contains everything. So, those are the three just a sense of how experiential language works. What you're doing is you're taking language and utilizing it to guide your awareness to into awareness or outward into space or to bring it into this awareness, this experience of oneness. And so that's just to give a sense of it. I hope that that's helpful, but, um, now, there's the, the final point, which is there's the questioning um, spiritual method, methods, if you will. There's the experiential language, you know, spiritual teaching model, and then there's methodology. Methodology is the big one. You know, this is the important one. This is the, you know, these other things are... I think they're all helpful, they're all useful, they can, they can really point you in the right direction, questioning can get you pointed in the right direction, and it may bring someone directly to realization, awakening, awareness, as can experiential language, which can walk you through the process of coming directly to this awareness, can guide you. Um, that's certainly possible too, but the way to ensure that you'll come directly to self-realization and awakening is not necessarily through any questioning process or through a, an experiential language, a guiding process to this awareness. It is to have clear methods, clear methodologies. So that's what this, the last part I'm going to talk about.